Shop Talk Tech Tips are brought to you by SNS. Proven performance for the power sports industry. Hey everybody, this is Chris with Cycle Source Magazine, Grease and Gears Garage, and we're back in the shop today for a long overdue episode of the FXR Evolution that the um, good folks at Dennis Kirk are going to be giving away at the end of this build. Um, we've been doing a lot of stuff with this bike for setup with part selection, and I'm actually going to do a segment. One of the challenges that you're going to find when you're building one of these uh, earlier FXRs is the fact that the parts that they're making today, all the snazzy, you know, billet and colorways and not necessarily available for these bikes. So it's a couple of tricks that you're going to have to do along the way. Um, some of it may make the FXR purist cringe a little bit. Not so much for me and the chopper kids. So we're going to stick pretty true to not overly raping the FXR frame. We're going to do a couple little adjustments that are going to help us move into some modern parts and bring this thing into the uh, the performance era of things that are going on today. Um, what we're going to start with, and if you guys have been with us for a while, you remember my War Pony project where we took the 2003 Ultra Classic that we had for so many, many years, and through an FXR frame with Paco, we turned it into the Bonneville Salt Flat Racer that it is today. One of my best and favorite parts on that bike was a handmade set of FXR side covers. Now, with the exception of um, chopper guys, which as soon as those show up on the market, they're gone again. And um, and I think Steve Chamberlain, when he makes his by hand, those are pretty awesome. But other than that, like the store-bought ones, I'm really not into. Um, a little bit of time and effort, and you can have killer side covers that no one else has too. So starting off with this project, we're going to show you how we model for these. And um, actually, I'm going to show you a new way that I... I'm going to give credit to my to my kid, Killer. If you're out there, your interest in cosplay has helped me with my chopper building. It's amazing. I can't believe that I'm saying that. But anyone who's done sheet metal work knows the, uh, the old template, right? The cardboard template. You get it up here, get your template drawn out, you go to work. We're going to move from the cardboard template to start to EVA foam. Now, if you see this thing that I have here, this is actually EVA foam. It's a new kind of foam that the, the people that do cosplay and make all the, you know, ornate helmets and horns and all of that. You start out with this foam like this, heat it up, and it actually hardens as it starts to cool. So this gives you the ability to really get a, a nice model. I like to have the, the actual inset dimensions and everything back here so that when we make our pieces that fold over, it's going to sit in there nice and tight. It's not going to leave gaps and stuff. So throughout this process, um, as we take some regular 18-gauge sheet steel and make these side covers, we're going to be using a lot of the tools in the garage. Um, you know, starting off with the EVA modeling, I'm going to show you guys here today. We'll move on to um, T-dollies and some slap hammers. We'll be using those in conjunction with the, uh, the shrinker and stretcher, the... Um, the uh, beater bag and some hammers um, and I don't have out here right now the planishing hammer so all of that stuff we're gonna you know be doing cycles of this until we find a, a good groove for our side covers hopefully what we come up with in the end is as nice as the ones that we had on War Pony but we're gonna start today showing you guys a little bit of this EVA foam modeling so let's go check this out okay so a couple things that you're gonna need for this step of the project good heat gun um drill master makes one harbor freight two speeds high and low high and low heat um not even sure where i got these but it's called the on cutter and like for tubing and everything this is absolutely killer but for for this you'll see why I like cutting on angles and stuff these cutters are great uh standard pair of scissors some masking tape and shoe glue or similar contact cement um you know as as rigid as this becomes like for different things if you saw on the piece on the other side here i actually put some supports in because it's not it's not like this turns into fiberglass or plastic or anything yeah let's jump in i'm going to do this first rail across the top and uh, you'll see i'm not quite into the corner so before i make my indication of where i want to cut this side off 
I'm actually going to do the same thing that we do when uh, when we're building frames, and I'm going to I'm going to cut that on the angle, the complementing angle of the place where it sits. Okay, so now you see it fits up in there a little bit better. So I'm going to grab my pen and I'm going to push this in to where the edge of the frame is. I'm going to cut that on that angle like that. So I actually made a little more of an adjustment, more of an angle than I originally cut it with the belt sander so I could get it to fit nice and tight in there. And you can see already, take a couple pieces of tape and just, right now this is the mocking process. We're just going to mock it up like this. All I'm going to do is make a mark, and we're actually going to notch it out for that. <coughs> to get this to fit in here, I actually faced this a little bit, but at this point, I'm pretty happy with that, how this thing is following this frame line exactly. We're going to do the same thing here, and we're going to play the same game with this piece here. Take this and clip the end real quick now. It's time to start heating these things up and getting them into place. Okay, I think it's good enough to get started. You can see this stuff gets really, really bendable now. I'm going to get it into position. Take our tape. Now that it's up here, I'm going to go back and and really put a lot of heat to it so that I can make sure I want that stuff to stay in place, you know. And you just kind of keep working it as it's cooling. I'm just going to take some shoe goo on the tip. Mush it up in there. And maybe we'll just give it a little bit of heat from this side. It's nice and pliable now, so I'm not going to get crazy with the pressure on this one because we did get it so soft. Okay, so same deal. Get our top line. Okay, now that that's in there, I'm going to heat it some more. Once this is all cured and had time to sit, we'll come back in with more heat and really try to form it one last time. A couple cross braces. Same deal. A little bit of shoe goo. Big fan. Okay, so that's where we're going to wrap up for today. Um, hopefully when we come back to this, we're going to take you to the next step. We're going to make some paper templates to start cutting our sheet metal out, and we'll start into the process of actually forming these metal side covers. Um, kind of excited about it you know this could be a, a neat new thing for the industry it could be a neat new tool so we'll see how it goes we'll see if it's going to be a neat new tool or just a way for my daughter to make fun of me so hey dad you know what would be cool we'll find out in the next episode of grease and gears garage for now i want to remind you guys you can get out to dennis kirk today dennis kirk is giving this motorcycle away when it's finished you want to go to denniskirk.com slash garage build Garage Build is a fantastic program that they run for all garage builders to show off their work and form a community. So go and check it out today. Sign up for the FXR Evolution giveaway at Dennis Kirk. I'm Chris from Cycle Source. We'll see you next time.